Hi, welcome everyone to this uh, Ice House podcast. My name is Maurice and I'm one of the customer growth partners uh, at the Ice House. With me today, I have my friend Tanya Beasley. She's currently the regional director for uh, the UK and Europe for Kia New Zealand and is working as a program partner for NZTA. She's known as a connector, a networker for communities across the UK and Europe and New Zealand and, is a, and was awarded the UK New Zealander of the Year through the UK New Zealand Society in 2020. Whilst on a trip back to Wellington earlier this year to catch up with family and friends, uh, lockdown hit. So Tanya and her husband Anton made the decision to move back to New Zealand after living in London for 15 years. So we're just going to have a general chat today about Tanya and her history. Um, she's such an amazing person. Um, and we're also going to talk a lot more about um, why networking is key and her role in at Kia New Zealand as well. So, hi Tanya. Kia ora darling, hi Marie, so good to see you. Oh, it is too, even virtually, but we will see each other again very, very soon. Um, hopefully if I'm down in Wellington or if you're up in Auckland again, we'll catch up yep. with that song, Overdue Coffee. Um, I remember the first time I ever met you. I don't know if you remember this. Okay. <laughs> It was an intro, an, an intro through um, my friend slash cousin, Tina, and I just uh, quit my job in London and um, I was a bit upset. I wasn't sure whether or not to stick in, in London or, or to, you know, move back to New Zealand. I think this must have been back in 20, 2012, 2014, wow. and it was around yeah. October, November. And Tina said, oh, Maurice, I'm going to introduce you to this lady, Tanya. She's an amazing connector and she knows a lot of people and might be able to help you. And so I met you just outside um, uh, New Zealand House and we went for a coffee and you shouted me a coffee. And after that meeting, I just felt so much better, so much more, um, uh, so, so much stronger. And knowing that, yeah, I've made the decision to, to stay in London, so I'm going to stick, stick there. And ever since then, uh, it's just been magic. Thank you. I don't know if you remember. Oh, well, no, I remember um, a lovely light coming into my life and I'm really pleased that we met and, you know, the power of connections, right? Right there, the right people yeah. being brought together. And it's been really great to see your journey of coming home and finding your place here and really excited to see what you're doing with the Ice House and helping New Zealand businesses um, grow and um, achieve the goals. Or even as I understand the Ice House, even having them understand what their goals are and I can't think of anyone better to do that. So yeah. really great to be here with you. Thank you. And um, speaking of Ice House, so this week we have just started Owner Manager Program number 50. So wow. what we're doing is we've, um, we've launched a campaign called 1050. So 1000 is uh, this year we're going to have the 1000th registration for Owner Manager Program and it's so exciting. And of course 50 for Owner Manager Program number 50. So there's uh, 20 odd people currently starting their journey through Ice House and um, I was with them earlier and they're just they're just so excited, so pumped up and already networking. Just amazing yeah, yeah. To, just to see that magic in the room. You could hear yeah, the laughter, yeah. you could hear the stories and just the, just I, I don't know how Ice House does it, but it's just magic every time I, I see a, a bunch of uh, newbies to the Ice House network um, come together so quickly. Yeah, it's fantastic. I remember when you came up to, um, to the Ice House a few years ago. And I introduced you to everyone. I said, oh, this is my friend Tanya. <laughs> she's from Kia. <laughs> I've known her for yeah. a very long time and she's an amazing person. Uh, thanks, Maurice. Yeah, well, I'm really lucky. So I've been with Kia for five years. Yeah. And um, right from the beginning, one of the first introductions was to the master that is Andy Hamilton. So um, I have felt connected to the Ice House for quite some time and have had the fortune to engage with some of your companies who have made their way into the UK. Mm. So I've always felt that synergy between, you know, New Zealand helping New Zealand and I really admire the work that you'll do on shore to help those and it's great to have those helping hands offshore, which is what Kia specialises in, right? So it's that whole connecting New Zealand's aspiration, the global aspiration to expert, to expats around the world and mm. tapping into those skill sets and that knowledge mm. and insights in that community. So, um, yeah, I've long admired um, what you've all been up to and it's mm. always nice to come and meet the team and see what's going on. And then just seeing what happened with the fund to us, Ice Angels, just seeing that encouragement of New Zealand investing in itself has been a really exciting journey to watch as well. Yeah. So I always love to pop by when I can, and it's always exciting to hear who's doing what there. And, and I'm always scouring the walls of success and seeing who's coming into the UK to see how myself can help those businesses, but those going into, say, the US or China 
can be helped by Kia there as well. And obviously our global connections are worldwide. So no matter where you're going to the world, inevitably we'll be able to find a Kiwi who can help. Mm. So I'm just sharing Kia, the New Zealand yep. Global Network. Um, how long have you been with Kia for? So I joined Kia in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, my background is in hospitality um, and sales and event management and teaching and all sorts of things. Mm. And I found myself in this wibbly wobbly road away from all of that into doing some volunteer work, which was centered around the New Zealand community. Mm. And through that work, I started to be really aware of what New Zealanders and New Zealand was achieving within the UK. I probably like many expats had spent my time building my international group of friends, trying to be as local as I could in London. And New Zealand was kind of there in the background, but we would celebrate it, say, when the All Blacks came into town or if, if there was an annual day as in Waitangi or, or Anzac is when New Zealand would be front and centre for us. Mm -hmm. But over a bit of time, six, six years in, I really started to miss home and was looking for New Zealand and the UK. And so that journey led to me, like I said, to some voluntary work and I was blown away what Kiwis were achieving. Mm -hmm. And then the Kia opportunity came up. And it was an organisation that I had connected with a little as an expat, but because I didn't work in some of those areas of business, it probably hadn't attracted me um, up until that stage. But I sat down and really had a look at what the opportunity was there for me. And I realised that every day of the week I could wake up with the aspiration of helping New Zealand grow. Mm -hmm. So um, Kia is all about creating a borderless nation for New Zealand. We've been building yeah. it since 2001. And it's a global network of up to, you know, half a million connections around the world. And then we've got these focused kind of really engaged communities in areas like London, Beijing, Shanghai, New York, LA, and other centres around the world that are focused by um, into sort of the embassies and other Facebook groups. So New Zealand's incredibly active around the world. Mm. And so with that network, it meant that if New Zealand came calling, um, we could help. So we could look for the right expert, knowledge holder, introducer, um, guest speakers, or even just advocacy and sharing the news of New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I really loved it is that I could help New Zealand across all of our areas. So business, governance, um, projects, causes, sports, the arts. Every time New Zealand came knocking on the door of the UK seeking help, we could open the Kia network for them. So that's what drew me in. So I could live in one of the cities that I most loved in the world while mm. helping New Zealand. So it's been a pretty magic ride, Maurice, for the last five years. Um, when I went away on holiday in February, I didn't expect to be stepping away from that role. But as you sort of mentioned, my family and I have um, decided to unravel London and to make New Zealand home again, which has been daunting and really exciting at the same time. But I still remain really passionate about helping New Zealand go out into the world. And I'm working with Kia over the next couple of months um, to help them with some of that as to what do we look like mm. as an organisation around the world and mm. how do we keep helping New Zealand grow. So, mm. yeah, pretty exciting times, but that kind of takes you back to why I started, when I started, and I have met some incredible individuals, incredible businesses, and been able to help some really poignant um, moments of New Zealand's history offshore in the last five years it's been mm. an absolute privilege. Mm. I remember um, when you invited me along to the New Zealand UK Society and I was a committee member I was so excited about that and then also on that journey as well um, you asked me to help volunteer for some of the care events. I remember the first ever care event was with Craig Hudson from Zero yeah, and yeah. as soon as I heard his story I thought wow this is amazing and it's yeah, so yeah. cool to have a New Zealand company uh, make it global. And just hearing his story, hearing the Zero story was just amazing. So yeah, amazing. and aren't we That's lucky like, that Zero nabbed him and now he's, you know, kept him at home as country manager. So yeah, um, Craig's a really good friend of Kia um, through the growing of our relationship. And mm -hmm. we were very much focused on helping Zero offshore. I mean, they were tracking along quite nicely. They'd been in the market for 10 years and they're quite aspirational in their mm -hmm. goals. Um, but what we've been able to do is Zero Now powers our connection service. That's so an amazing alignment of New Zealand thinking globally and helping um, businesses grow through peer-to-peer -peer guidance, but also expertise, connections and markets that they're trying to break into. Mm -hmm. So we're really um, 
that wasn't the intention when we met Craig all those years ago, but I'm glad that you have fond memories of that gathering. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a time when Gary Turner had become a little bit of a robot because he had an injury. So he was working from home and created this really strange, um, I think it, um, with his computer, this little Gary robot would go around the zero office. And so Craig um, actually had to step in to be our guest speaker because Gary wasn't available. So That's right. Gary's misfortune ended up being our fortune. And then mm -hmm. we heard... Um, an incredible story of um, which is his own, but mm. um, is not unlike many New Zealanders, that tenacity mm. of when you're going offshore, when you're facing changes, when you're facing challenges, mm. when you lean into your own strength, but then those around you and community and, mm. and are often having to, when you're a Kiwi going offshore, you're jumping into new markets and new roles. And I know Craig's story is incredibly inspirational around what he's been able to achieve in business, but yeah, that was a few years ago now. And since mm. then, we've been able to share the stories of incredible New Zealanders across the business sector and sports world and, and governance mm. and be able to show and remind Kiwis what they're a part of and remind where they came from, but at the same time, connect them with incredible people. Mm. We find that success is attracted to success. So it's part of the elixir of care events pre-COVID when we could all come together in person was that we were often putting an inspirational individual at the front of the room that you probably thought you'd never get to meet. And so we've had great people like Joseph Parker, um, Sir Mark Todd, um, Stu McKinley from Yeastie Boys with their great story. Um, we've had Simon Coley from um, Karma Cola um, with Albert talking about their work with the foundation and their, their branding. So we've had a real raft of conversations over the years, but it's all the same. It's all about inspiring connecting and engaging, mm. oh. which we're now figuring out how to do that online. And that's kind of where we're really focusing on our sweet spots of in this moment of time, how can we help New Zealand? And it is very much our connection service and our world-class New Zealand network. That's where our strength is at a time like this when we're needing to activate um, our networks and the power of connections and introductions at a time where Kiwis can't just get on a plane and go into their marketplace. So mm. I just implore everyone, whether you're working through the Ice House and, and other um, organisations in New Zealand that are helping people grow like NZTE, if you're looking offshore, you should be looking to partner with those networks and um, connections you've got within the organisation you're partnering with, and then stepping into this free resource that New Zealand created for our businesses, which is the Care Connect service. Mm, mm. Uh, inspiration and um i think i also oh that god it's a long time ago now as well uh, back in london uh, i got to uh, meet and listen to sir stephen tyndall yeah as well who's also an advocate for ice house uh he's part of the ice um the ice house ventures ice angels network now yeah. as well yeah. and also speaking of uh craig um zero is a partner of the ice house and in our first ever conference a few years ago, he was one of our guest speakers. And again, he spoke about his inspirational story and uh, hey, it gets me every time. Yeah. Really yeah, we, we, you know, it's so nice to see and be reminded of those synergies between um, you know, Ice House and Kia and, and the partners. And Kia was born out of the Knowledge Wave conference back in 2001. This is at a point in history when New Zealand was really having a look at what do we do about our brain drain? What do we do about these great minds that are leaving and not coming back? And how do we mm. keep that? How do we build a nation that they are attracted to come back to to help? Or how do we create op global opportunities within our nation? Mm. That's obviously something that we, every country struggles with or, or battles with or looks at because the world's ever changing. Mm. But, you know, I'm really grateful for the likes of Sir Stephen Tyndall and Professor David Teese who came out of that conference and said, how about we look at this slightly different way? How about we understand where the Kiwi, Kiwis are around the world and how do we harness that energy for the benefit of New Zealand, but also how do we acknowledge them for what they're contributing in the world? And that has led to um, the amazing partnerships we've had over the years. And it was all because of that nucleus of an idea and the seed funding that individuals like Sir Stephen were able to give us that we've been able to go from strength to strength over the years. And then the curation of the World Class New Zealand Awards, which is... New Zealand's individual award for individuals around the world who are making great impact globally. And we get to bring Kiwi kids home to say, hey, we're really proud of you. So yeah, amazing to have visionaries like Sir Stephen woven within the ecosystem of business mm. from the guidance point right through to the funding 
I think we're really fortunate to have individuals like him who've chosen to stay at home mm. and to contribute in quite a big way. Mm, absolutely amazing absolutely amazing yeah. so speaking of uh bringing new zealanders back uh once a year for the global care awards um i was going to say i think that might have been the last time i saw you but it wasn't the last time i saw you was when i came over to london briefly yeah, yeah, yeah. back in july but before that i was trying to find a photo of you and i um you know, we all done up looked, looking absolutely amazing like we are today as well uh just to talk a little bit more about about those uh the the Kia Awards and uh, who won last year? So, oh gosh, you're going to put me on the spot, Marie. So I was there. Um, he's he's come so, back to New Zealand. Yeah. So last year we in in June. So we've had to postpone the event for this year, which has um, been a really tough, but the only decision to make, right? So we've got an exciting event that's happening on the 16th of March next year. Um, and then last year, we were able to celebrate the Supreme winner, Peter Gordon, who won his Supreme Award for the contribution he's made to food and beverage and the growth of, um, you know, brand New Zealand from a food and beverage perspective offshore and what he's been able to contribute to the hospitality world worldwide. And um, I don't know if you've seen the news, Peter has chosen just ahead of COVID to make New Zealand home again. So really excited to see what he's going to be creating with um, Homeland, where he's really going to be working really closely with the food and beverage sector and those niche and fine food products up and down the country that need to start looking global to grow their markets. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it um, points to why individuals like Peter have dedicated their lives to a career that they love, but have brought people with them along the journey. Um, he's the re you know all of those things that he's just done out of passion for his job led to him being the supreme award winner last year so um if you look over the alumni from you know tim brown from all birds and rachel from connor um i mean the list goes on and on and on or did excel with the amazing work that she does in funding but philanthropy and doing things for good um, i encourage anyone who needs a bit of inspiration about what's possible in careers to dive into the Kia website and have a look at our alumni for their World Class New Zealand Award winners. But outside of the award winners, we also have this really rich network of 500 individuals around the world who have been acknowledged by Kia as experts in field or have been successful to a point that they really deserve some acknowledgement from New Zealand. And we tap them on the shoulder and ask them if they want to help us and join us on our mission, and they say yes. So we've got these 500 active points of people who are sitting in really influential positions around the world who, when we can, um, we leverage into those relationships. So it's really powerful. We've had other governments come to us trying to figure out how we engage our diaspora. And we've been doing this for 18 years. So um, it's, it's part of our DNA. It is who we are, but we're always striving to get better at it. So yeah, those awards, um, to your question, a kind of the June North for us of celebrating individual success and bringing Kiwis home. And we've seen some really great results of when we've brought someone home who maybe hasn't been home for a while or hasn't actually had that direct acknowledgement from um, its home nation. Mm -hmm. And then the love that starts to be born, that connection back to New Zealand for them, and then equally so the projects that they become aligned with when they go back to their other home. So yeah, it's a pretty magic event and um, there'll be future plugs coming out to the New Zealand business ecosystem for people to secure their tickets. And we've got some pretty phenomenal winners next year um, mm. who've graciously accepted to delay the award recipients for this year um, and will join us in 2021. So mm. yeah, pretty phenomenal event. But even if you're unable to attend to the room, it's a story to keep watching um, because it just shows some really inspirational stories of Kiwi kids who've gone on to work at NASA or um, the like or, or have made great impact in the agricultural scene in China or are um, looking at breaking through with research into motor neurone disease. I mean, these are little Kiwi kids that have gone out into the world and are creating um, global impact. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. And um, I heard a rumour that, <laughs> um, that you had, um, that, that someone cooked for you while you're in Auckland? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a little rumour that I shared on Facebook, Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's this funny thing, the phenomenon that happens when you're 
expats, and I think it happens here anyway, Kiwis are friendly, right? So there's all those cliches I've seen to be true. Mm. I've been really fortunate being in the UK for 15 years to get to know um, Peter Gordon, and Peter um, has become a really dear friend, of which I'm really fortunate, and don't take that wonderful and tasty friendship for granted. Mm. Um, so yeah, was able to catch up with him. Um, my husband and I took a little break from Wellington up into Auckland to catch up with some friends and do some work with here. So I will boast a little about sitting in Hearn Bay and eating freshly cooked fish from Peter Gordon, um, a highlight and a really nice welcome home. But equally, to be able to give him a big hug and welcome him home, he's going to be creating some really great opportunities for New Zealand, um, our young, our inspirational our food and beverage scene. So, yeah, let's all watch the space to see what the master has um, coming up for us. I remember having brunch with uh, with my girlfriends over in London when I was there last year at Peter Gordon's restaurant, and oh my goodness, it was oh. amazing. I think I had the, the Turkish egg. Yeah, oh. yeah, famous for his Turkish eggs, but also there were many tears from many people when Providores closed its doors for the last time, and I did join the queue of um, many, many people that queued for hours to get into the restaurant to all nab their own little piece of Providores, and I'm really proud... Um, to be the owner of the little Kiwi clock that they used to have hanging on the wall um, that um, Peter and his business partner, Michael, gifted to me because I used to dine there a bit and bring lots of people along. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just a real privilege to support New Zealand offshore. And as a Kiwi community in London, um, we're really fortunate that people do support each other. Um, even if you are not the one going into the restaurant or buying the product, we all advocate on behalf of each other. So, that's another thing that I sort of implore to New Zealand businesses is that find a way to connect with the New Zealanders in the market that you're going into. And it's not all so always necessarily that they're going to put their hands in their pocket or be your end partner or customer, but they'll advocate for you. Mm. They'll listen to what you're doing. They'll um, do their own little sense check around quality, but then they will advocate. They'll push to make sure that every person they know buys, picks peanut butter. They'll mm. make sure that everyone's got Cadrona on their drink shelves or that they're getting great New Zealand wine through the New Zealand cellar and specialist wines. So we're just great advocates for really good stories and good products. And, mm. you know, only the best make it offshore, really. And so how do we all work together to make sure that more of the best make it offshore? Mm. And then how do you connect with those communities? So I know you wanted to talk a little bit about the power of connections. Mm. And it's that, it's that storytelling. It's connecting into every Kiwi that you can find, the New Zealand community groups, the embassies, um, and obviously NZT offshore. How do you make sure that everyone knows that you're there? Mm. And although they may not be your end customer, the more they know about you, we're really good storytellers. We love sharing stories of success and contribution. So make some noise with New Zealand. It's that low hanging fruit. We're all really proud um, mm. and, you know, and share that. So I've been lucky. We've been living in that for 15 years and now I'm really fortunate to be home. Um, I still get a little bit excited every time I see a New Zealand made product and just have to remind myself that I'm actually in New Zealand. <laughs> so I think I've been known for a while to be like the super Kiwi um, offshore because New Zealand was very much in my life while living away. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of NZTE, uh, what's their connection with CARE? We're really fortunate that New Zealand Trade Enterprise is one of our major funders. So CARE is a non-profit organisation that is part funded by government. And it won't surprise you to know that, you know, when you're looking at taking New Zealand um, offshore, mm -hmm. um, NZT is all about making our businesses go offshore and be bigger and faster and better. Mm -hmm. And so how do we do that? Um, they do that through the great guidance and strategy work that the teams do with the companies between customer managers and commercial advisors. Mm. Sometimes you need the people in there, you need those connections. And that's where we use services like Kia to make those warm introductions into industry. So they've been a funder of ours for many years and it's a relationship that we really hold dear and we work as closely with them as we can around the world to help mm. um, them be successful in their mission, but more importantly, to help our businesses. And then we work alongside um, MFAT and MB and have been working alongside tourism as well. So without that, it really shows um, then, you know, we wouldn't exist. And we've got amazing commercial partners as well, which I could rattle off. Um, but all of us together are all agreed in one thing. We're all here to make New Zealand bigger and faster and work better offshore. 
So everything we do is about creating high impact connections for the benefit of New Zealand. So having partnerships like the NZTE are crucial to us being able to do that. Because mm. like the Ice House, they're advocating on behalf of us as well. I've seen it for the last five years is that Kiwis are fiercely independent and we do love our own story of success, but I do see the thrust that comes and the assurance into a new market when you're talking to a friendly Kiwi. Yeah. So if I think about kit bags, which are making beautiful leather products for those who um, live with diabetes. And so Bridget has created this beautiful bag that enables diabetes um, people to feel like they're carrying and being um, what they need to keep them safe and healthy with them while the time feeling stylish, but also carrying everything that else they need to go about their day. Her product is incredible and will go global. But mm. through Kia, we were able to connect her with the CEO of Church's Footwear, um, which is owned by the Prada Group. And so we're able to connect her with the Kiwi guy who knows retail, he knows product development, he knows the manufacturing and the leather industry, and the guidance that he was able to give them over a couple of phone calls is immeasurable. And it was free advice, it was open advice, it was honest because it was Kiwi to Kiwi. Mm. So, you know, I have a raft of stories like that where Kiwi businesses have been bold to put their hand up to say, I really need some help or I have this question. Um, and then we search the network and we connect people with people and then the rest is up to them. Mm. Um, yeah, it's pretty intoxicating, but we couldn't do that without our partners. So mm. we're always incredibly um, grateful for all of those, but we all work together because we're on the same mission. Yeah. I know that sometimes partnerships can be that you're kind of working sometimes away from your mission in order to have that partnership. That yeah. is so not true between DLA Piper, KPMG in New Zealand, um, University of Auckland and AT and Zero and Yeelands. We've all got the same vision um, and mission, but we're just doing it in a slightly different way. So yeah, it's fun to be mm. working with all of them. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely all about networking connection in order yeah. to get to the next level as well. Yeah. Um, uh, so for people that are watching this podcast, if you are exporting or looking to export, definitely uh, get in contact with NZBA and also register with the Care Network. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. 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 All right, That's so I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to share um, another photo. If you can please describe this. In, I don't know, a, a few words. What does that mean to you? Uh, yeah. Um, a, a, very, a most humbling moment in time. So this is when I'd been announced the UK New Zealand of the Year 2020. Um, and standing there um, with Sir Jerry Mataparai, who was at the time the High Commissioner for New Zealand and the UK. Mm -hmm. um, and then wearing that gorgeous dongle of the New Zealand Society is Clarence Tan, the current president for the New Zealand Society. So this is an award um, which is um, nominated by the community. Um, it's an award that's been going since the late 90s and the first person to win it actually was Peter Gordon. So I, um, this moment sees me join an incredible alumni of New Zealanders that I've always been in awe of, um, including Dame Kerry Takanawa, um, Dame Judith Mayhew Jonas, um, Esther Kirk Jessup, um, some pretty, you know, Mark Wilson, some pretty incredible Kiwis. Um, very humbled to join that alumni. And this was an acknowledgement to an event that I helped create and led in London at Trafalgar Square as our community response and our nation response in London to the Christchurch shootings. So this was an event that we brought together within um, about 72 hours of actual work, but sort of a, a, a three-day discussion process about appropriate response um, and worked together with the community groups and reached out to the British Muslim community in the UK mm. and were able to work um, together to, br to bring together a peace vigil at Trafalgar Square with um, several thousand people in attendance, mm. a multi-faith ceremony that just took a moment of reflection, um, thinking around the lives that were needlessly lost, um, the families whose lives are, are changed forever. Mm -hmm. But it was our way as a New Zealand community in the UK to show our British um, Muslim brothers and sisters know that we were there for them. Mm -hmm. And also our way to show New Zealand that we were there for them. So um, it was a tough award to accept on that basis because you know I was just part of a team 
that led the way to bring a moment for people to, to stop and reflect and to think and be together. Mm. And we did so peacefully. It was absolutely beautiful from, you know, we had the Adan um, called in time for prayer. We had prayers um, from multi-faiths. We had Nati Dana there to help us with the haka. I mean, it was a pretty special moment and we were completely supported by the High Commission with Sir Jerry giving mm. some amazing words. And so, um, really humbled to be nominated for my, the part that I played there and to um, have one as just, yeah, an accolade that I'll forever be humbled by. And I'm really proud to have been up um, with an, be a finalist for with New Zealand comedian Jared Christmas. So he also responded um, as a Kiwi, you're heartbroken when something goes wrong at home and you're so far away. Mm. And so he responded by bringing together an incredible comedy night where they raised 15,000 pounds for Victim Support Christchurch. Mm. And that was a comedy evening of New Zealand, British and British Muslim comedians called Laugh at the Face of Hate. And he brought, you know, about 800 to 1,000 or so people together to, um, to give money, but also mm. to spend time together um, as, you know, cross-cultural and cross-communities. And so he and I were really humbled to be finalists, mm. but someone had to win, it turned out, and, and that was me. Yeah. Um, hey, no matter where you are in the world as a New Zealander, you know, New Zealand will always have a, a massive place in your heart and in your soul. Yeah. Mm. All right. Speaking of New Zealand, I'm going to share one more photo with you. Okay. Um, this is about now and the future. So okay. tell me, who are these Beautiful people. I know them. Oh my God, I love how young I look in that photo, Marie. So it's a few years ago. So this is my amazing little family, our little power group of three. Um, my beautiful daughter, Paige, um, who's with us in New Zealand after, unfortunately, she wasn't allowed to go back to Australia with lockdown. Um, she's had to give up her little life in Melbourne that she'd just started. So she's with us, um, figuring out what her, her next steps look like in New Zealand. And then my wonderful support and anchor, my husband, Anton. So we're um, a great little team of three. And um, what's next for us? So like many people, we've found ourselves having to make some really big life decisions. And so we were here on holiday for a family wedding, which was amazing. It managed to happen ahead of lockdown. Mm. Unfortunately, we then had a bereavement in the family. And once again, we were really lucky. We were able to come together before lockdown. But then we listened to the caution of both governments and UK and New Zealand to decide to stay put. And we naively thought we'd be here for a month or so not quite realizing what lockdown was going to look like and what it would mean globally. So, um, and then, like I said, our daughter was unable to re-enter Australia because of the resident and citizen rules that they had. So um, luckily for us, we all ended up in the same country and we all ended up together. So we're working out on that. Um, we're moving to Plymouthton Beach in a couple of weeks time um, to be by the beach, which feels like the complete opposite because it is of London. Um, and then we're going to see what New Zealand's got in store. I'm really excited about the work I'm doing with Kia over the forthcoming months. And um, we're just going to figure it out. But we always knew we were coming home. We just thought we'd be a little bit more organised. We've got amazing friends in the UK who are going in to hack up our home and our lives. And um, we talked about it off, off screen yesterday morning. I sat in a really emotional farewell event with the New Zealand community groups in London. They put together a really beautiful Zoom event complete with an MC and wire and speeches and photos and um, I'm just sitting here feeling really grateful for the international community that I have the amazing mm. friends that I've, I've gained through my work with New Zealand but feeling really excited about what's in the future here and what I can do from my little part of the world to help New Zealand grow so I'm still going to be advocating the same that I have for the last you know nine years as a proud Kiwi um, helping New Zealand organizations and then even more so through the work I've done with Kia in the last five years to help New Zealand yeah. grow. So what's next? Come back to me in a couple of months' time. But we're really grateful to be here with mum and dad. Mm. We've been getting to see friends because obviously level one life um, is full of a lot of um, ability to do so. I've got friends mm. all around the world that are living in quite different situations than I. So very mindful that we're really lucky here. Um, mm. As tough it is as in business, um, we all just need to work together on this. And... Mm. So the earlier points, you know, there is help out there for you to help you step through this mm. really unusual time and don't be afraid to ask for help 
and then we can all navigate it together because we want a rich, prosperous, um, happy New Zealand at the end of all of this. Um, but we don't know what the end road looks like. So yeah, just like everyone else, I'm having to navigate big change, but I'm an eternal optimist and I think I'm in the right place and I can make some cool things happen. And who doesn't want to be back in a New Zealand beach? My goodness, how lucky am I? Yeah, welcome home, Tanya. Thank you, I cannot wait to see you. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to and, it too. In person. <laughs> really excited. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, that's a wrap for today. But thank you so much for tuning in and listening to Tanya's story. Um, tune in next week for another podcast. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Maurice.